So my presentation today is to talk about how accurate is LIDAR. Well, let me start then by first of all defining what am I talking about uh, when I say LIDAR. Well, LIDAR, of course, is another one of our acronyms in the world of GIS, light detection and ranging, all thrown together, and we say LIDAR. In this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on airborne LIDAR and not terrestrial LIDAR or TLS, terrestrial laser scanning. Uh, let's look then specifically at airborne LIDAR. Airborne LIDAR is a way to collect elevation data, surface data. Uh, an aircraft passes overhead like we're looking at in that uh, graphic on the left. An onboard sensor emits a laser pulse. It's an active sensor. Uh, and then it receives laser returns. Those returns form what we call a LIDAR point cloud, LPC. So some more alphabet soup for us. And ultimately, a digital terrain model, DTM. That's our surface model uh, showing what we call the bare earth. There is also uh, another product called a DSM. That's actually the digital surface model, which will model uh, the, the, uh, the top of canopy as well as bare ground if that sensor is seeing bare ground uh, directly. We're going to be focusing on bare earth digital terrain model. A little bit more about LIDAR. LIDAR products have high spatial resolution in contrast to the National Elevation Data Set, the NED data set, which has a 10 meter uh, spatial resolution. LIDAR normally gives us a one meter cell size or one meter spatial resolution. This is much more resolved than previous topographic data. As I already mentioned, the National Elevation Data Set, NED, has or uses 10 meter uh, pixels. Uh, so therefore, we have 100 LIDAR-derived pixels, one meter pixels, for every one NED 10 meter pixels, so 10 multiplied by 10. But it, the question then is LIDAR more accurate? Now we have to define some more terms. Let's define uh, what we're really talking about. Are we talking about accuracy or precision or maybe both? So here's the, you've probably seen something like this before. Uh, all the way on the left side over here, we see a target where we have very high precision, very nice precision, but poor accuracy, assuming this is what we our, our goal is right here. In this second image here, we see pretty good accuracy, very close to that uh, target we're interested in, but the precision has a lot of dispersion. In this third image over here, poor precision, poor accuracy. The last on the right, we're, we're seeing great precision and great accuracy. That's what we want. Hey, we want the best of both worlds. We want our cake and eat it too, right? Well, to determine accuracy, a known reference value, think of the bullseye, is required. And this reference needs to be accepted as the true value. Now, there's oftentimes some discussion when we get into this level of assessment about what is the true value, but it's not too terribly difficult to come to some sort of agreement about what is the true value of an elevation uh, somewhere, let's say, around Idaho. So do we have a true value? Let's talk about how we discern that. And as I already alluded to, in a very much absolute sense, with 100% certainty, the answer is no. No, you do not have a true value. We do not have the sensor capabilities or the capabilities to measure uh, to the nanometer or something like this out uh, in the field. But we probably don't need that. The values also consider the, those values X, Y, and Z change over time. There can be subsidence, 
There can be an earthquake. Um, there can be, of course, the natural shift of the plates over time, moving, uh, of course, moving us in the X and the Y. And uh, once again, we don't have the field instrumentation necessary to measure perfectly. So we're not going to let that stop us, though, and we're not going to succumb to what we call analysis paralysis. Instead, let's come to an agreement upon a true value, true value data source with an acceptable level of error. Meet the MCPD. This is the multi-state control point database. Right now, we it, it contains over 22,681 points. I say over that value because since I made this uh, presentation just a little while ago, the uh, we've had additional submissions of control points into the MCPD, so that number has gone up a little bit. Uh, each of those control points is submitted by a um, professional land surveyor here in Idaho. And overall, the vertical accuracy, um, vertical positional accuracy statement for points in the MCPD is plus or minus 0 0.08 or eight hundredths of a meter. Now, let, let me walk through the methods that I've used to assess the accuracy of LIDAR and our surface data that we have available to us here in Idaho. First of all, uh, using the MCPD, I selected only those MCPD points having, number one, a recorded or measured, I should say, elevation value, so a recorded Z, and a stated vertical accuracy of that 0 0.08 meters, eight centimeters, roughly eight centimeters, uh, and um, uh, about three inches. Those points were then projected into Idaho Transverse Mercator, NAD 83, using the NAV D88 meters uh, vertical datum. Now, many of you probably recognize that this is the state standard in the state of Idaho for both the horizontal and vertical. So that's what I'm using. Uh, elevation values were also converted into meters if they uh, were not done so already. And you have to realize that a lot of the work that surveyors are doing, they are using state plane coordinate system in feet. Uh, and of course, then if X and Y are in feet, then normally Z is in feet also. So the conversion was made pretty simple conversion. Uh, so that elevation is in meters as well. The MCPD points uh, may reference elevations at the top of a cap or monument and not the ground, however. So that's a little bit problematic. Uh, so I enlisted the help of Hagen Beckstead. He's our geodetic analyst here at the GIS Center. Uh, and he helped me, uh, helped us uh, identify ground uh, those MCPD control points that were actually on the ground. So we had cross-referenced and only uh, those on the ground were retained. We ended up with 281 points at this uh, part of the, uh, or this point in the study. Those elevation values were extracted at each MCPD, uh, MCPD point. And then um, um, I dropped, I, I should say, I dropped those MCPD points onto our Idaho LIDAR service as well as on the National Elevation Dataset, the NED. So I use the tool Extract Multi-Values to Points in ArcGIS Pro. Input point features, MCPD, those 200 and some points. And then I had two different input rasters. One was Idaho LIDAR, the second, the NED product. The results is we ended up with 279 points uh, being extracted from the NED, two of the points returned errors uh, fell into a place that was not covered or had some sort of error pixels associated with them. So it's 279 points. Um, but we only had 93 points uh, extracted from the LIDAR. Why is that? Well, look at our LIDAR. We do not have 100% coverage of LIDAR across the state of Idaho. 
uh, we have, oh, about 15% of the state covered uh, by LIDAR. And so only 93 of those original 281 points had LIDAR data. But that's not bad. That's a pretty good sample size, well over our uh, statistical rule of thumb of having 30 sample points. Were there differences? Yes, there was. And so what I did is I calculated the absolute difference of the MCPD point minus the LIDAR. Okay, so, uh, and I did the same thing for the, uh, for the NED, as well as uh, subtracted the NED from the LIDAR. Three separate columns here, and let me kind of walk you through this descriptive statistics that we're looking at. The mean difference between LIDAR and MCPD was, and isn't that an interesting number? We saw this earlier. Uh, it is that uh, eight centimeters. The absolute difference of MCPD and NED is over one meter, 1 1.6 meters of difference. The difference between NED and LIDAR, 1.4 meters. Um, I'm going to look at the distribution of these data by comparing our mean and median. Uh, and we're seeing that these data would not be considered normally distributed. And that is because our median value differs quite substantially from our mean value. The median difference uh, between LIDAR and MCPD is only four centimeters, almost five centimeters. Uh, and yet we're seeing some pretty large differences with the NED product and the difference between NED and LIDAR. What this is all showing us is that there's actually fairly strong um, agreement between LIDAR elevations, bare earth, and MCPD. So that's really good. Um, what that's also telling us is that there's quite a bit of difference in the NED product the national elevation data set. So 0 0.047 meters, that's our median. That's only 1.85 inches, so less than two inches of difference between what we're calling our true value. Uh, and what's also interesting is, of course, before I uh, express this as absolute values, in general, the LIDAR data resulted in higher elevations compared to MCPD. But of course, there is that good agreement between LIDAR and MCPD data. The median difference is within the error tolerance of the MCPD. Did you notice that? Our error difference, our median difference is 0 0.04, and our error tolerance of MCPD is 0 0.08. Um, now, that's actually pretty important because statistically, what's that telling us is there's no difference between MCPD elevation data and LIDAR data. They are telling us the same thing. Now, why did I use median? I'm focusing on median. Well, the reason why I'm using that is because the median is considered a resilient statistic. It is not pulled um, by extreme values. So somewhere uh, inside that data set, uh, that we just looked at, there is probably one or two um, points that have a large difference, fairly large difference between um, the LIDAR and the MCPD. Uh, it won't be too hard for me to actually drill down and find that, just do some sorting, really. But um, that point may be an error. Now, the error could be in the MCPD control. It could be in the LIDAR. I haven't done that digging, and that's not really what I want to talk about today, but I want to look at the accuracy, assess the accuracy of, of LIDAR. Unfortunately, we're seeing that NED is quite different, over one meter difference in elevation, both in mean uh, and median. So it's fantastic that we're getting more LIDAR data for the state, and uh, hopefully, before too long, we will have 100% coverage uh, for the state of Idaho, and we'll be able to use that uh, well into the future. Coming full circle then, 
LiDAR is better spatially resolved, it's more accurate, and it's more precise. It looks like that image that we're trying to uh, achieve where we have high precision, high accuracy, the best of both worlds. There we go, folks. 15 or so minutes of presentation. And now I'm going to open the floor to see if there are any questions. Feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, or uh, if you like, you can pop any questions that you have into the chat.